kiddos, today we're going to talk about conversion factors. Now, conversion factors are one of those things that are absolutely vital to us doing math and chemistry. Um, in fact, almost all of the math that we're going to do in chemistry is essentially going to revolve around this idea of conversion factors. There are a couple of formulas that we'll plug stuff into, but almost everything in chemistry is a matter of converting from one thing to another. And that kind of makes sense. I mean, it's chemistry, right? So, I mean, the chemistry itself is one thing turning into another thing. And so our math for chemistry is also a matter of taking something with one unit and then turning it into another unit. I wanna just say at the outset that very often students don't want to do it this way because they, they think they can solve the problems easier on their own knowing what they already know of math. And I won't deny that that's true at this level, but the further we get into the year, the more these fundamental principles of being able to use the conversion factors matter. So I wanna encourage you all um, to really focus in on, can I do it this way? Um, not because this is the way my teacher wants me to do it, but because it's gonna become increasingly useful to you as we go throughout the year. So um, let's start off with what I think um, is the basics for conversion factors, with this, which is something called equalities. Equalities are pretty straightforward. I mean, equalities basically just mean um, two things that are equal to each other in a given situation. Now they could be equal to each other all the time, but, but certainly in a given situation. So for instance, a dozen is equal to 12. Okay, um, one pair is equal to two of something. Um, we could say that there was a score of something, you know, like in uh, Abraham Lincoln's uh, Gettysburg Address, four score and seven years ago. So a score is 20. Um, we could go a little bit bigger into some things that we maybe don't know as well. Um, one gross is 144. Those of you that are Lord of the Rings fans, that probably makes some sense to you as well. So a gross is 144. And the question that you might ask is, okay, so one of each of these is that many of the others. What are these? Well, of course, those are whatever they need to be, right? Um, it could be a dozen eggs, a dozen donuts. It could be a pair of uh, shoes. Um, we could have a gross of eggs is relatively common. They sell eggs in bulk like that. Um, so those are equalities that could apply to a bunch of different things. So the scenario matters. Now these, of course, are always the same. And we're going to see here on the next video when we talk about moles, that mole essentially is an equality for something as well. Um, but what's important about these is that these are two things that are equal to each other. In these, this case, they're always equal to each other in that exact same way. We'll see in chemistry in a little bit that it's not always the same things. So what are some other equalities? Well, some of them, equalities are particularly useful when we're doing things like imperial units or like you saw in that last slide where we had like some things that maybe you weren't used to like a gross. So one gallon equals four quarts. The fact that one quart is two pints. Okay, and so in the imperial system, those really mattered a lot. That's not the only thing, um, of course, that would matter that way. We could also do the exact same thing for metric units. So we could say something like 1,000 milliliters equals one liter. That's really useful. We'll use that only a few hundred times this year. Um, 1,000 grams equals one kilogram. To put it to be one that you probably used a little bit in middle school, something like 100 centimeters equals one meter. Okay, so there's all kinds of different equalities, and, and there, really there are just almost an infinite number of situations where we can set up an equality. An equality itself is the beginning. This is what we should write down before we start to do any chemistry math, because what every single equality allows us to do is it allows us to get what we call conversion factors. Now, conversion factors are pretty straightforward in what they are. A conversion factor is a ratio that you use to convert from one unit to another unit. Um, there's actually a method to that um, that we're gonna talk about and the, the process of doing that, the process of, of taking conversion factors and ratios and canceling out units um, actually has a special name. It's called dimensional analysis. That sounds really complicated, it sounds almost like science fiction or whatever, but it just means dimensions, which are units, and then we're analyzing them and canceling them out. And that's exactly what we're gonna be doing. So how does that work? Well, every one of these equalities, we can pull out the equality, and I'm gonna take one of these metric ones just because 
sometimes, again, it's much more useful to do those because a lot of times when we're doing uh, metric ones, we don't need to do um, conversion factors. We would just move the decimal place. But for imperial units, we would have to do that. All, we, would, we would almost always have to use conversion factors. So I'm going to pull that out. Here's what I can make out of that equality. I can make that equality a ratio in two ways. I can have one gallon over four quarts, or I could have four quarts over one gallon. So which of those would be what I need? And let me make sure that we understand that we can go to either one of these two things. Which of those are the one that matter? Well, again, that will depend on the individual problem. And you'll see that here in just a second when we actually work a problem. Um, I could do that also for my metric unit. So if I took this last one um, down here, I could break that into two ratios where I could have 100 centimeters over one meter, or I could have one meter over 100 centimeters. Which one do I need? Again, it's going to depend on the problem, and you'll see that here in a second. But here's what's important. Equalities are when you set them in a line and say, for, for the given scenario that we're talking about, these two things are equivalent. Now, every one that I've listed here, they are always equivalent. One gallon is always four quarts. What we'll see in chemistry, though, is that sometimes two of this molecule equal one of this other molecule, and some other times three of this equals five of this. Okay, So in chemistry, it depends on the individual reaction. We'll talk a lot more about that a little bit later down the line. Okay, so let's work a problem or two so that we can see how conversion factors actually work. And then in the next video when we do moles, you'll really see why it's so important. All right, so let's work a problem. We're going to start really simple. I think it's important to start simple and work our complexity level up. So for those of you all that are like looking at this problem, you read it and you solved it in two seconds in your head, agreed. Most of it, not most of us maybe, but a lot of us could do that pretty swiftly. But remember that we're building up and we're going to get to way more complicated problems. And so it's going to much benefit you to learn the process in the simple way so that we can then apply it to slightly more complicated situations later on. So in addition to the conversion factor part of this, I want to start to introduce the way that I really think it's useful to write down and set up your problems in chemistry. So this is an example of what I would call a given and unknown problem. I have a given in the problem. I have a given in the problem. My given is the number that's given to me, okay? In this problem, it was really obvious what it was. In some problems, it becomes a little bit more complicated. I'm even gonna write a little bit more down because I think it's good to identify things. You'll see as you go throughout the year that, that becomes more and more important. So my given is five gallons of sauce. My unknown is that I'm looking for how many containers do I need, and that's not really very specific. What I really need is how many quart containers. So what I'm really looking for is how many quarts am I getting to? Now this is where equalities and conversion factors come in. Because what is important in every one of these given and unknown problems is once you've figured out what's, it, what's the given, what's the unknown, is what is the relationship between those two things? That relationship should be some sort of equality. So in our case, we talked about it in the last slide, and we said that one gallon was equal to four quarts, okay? So that is my relationship between my two things. And, and remember, what that allows me to do is there are two conversion factors that I can get from this one equality. So this is an equality, and I can make that into two different conversion factors. I could have one gallon over four quarts, or I could have four quarts over one gallon. So which one do I need? Well, that depends on your setup of the problem. So I'm going to set up the problem first. We're going to set this up and solve this using something called, um, they're called a bunch of things. Uh, dimensional analysis is what I, would, well, I learned to call it that way. Um, but I hear a lot of students refer to them as train tracks um, or conversion boxes or something like that. Train tracks sort of is the most common thing that people are going to call them. The reason that I'm going to set them up, and you'll see train tracks later on that are much more complicated than this, is that it just gives us a place to like set everything up and see where our math is and how we need to do everything. The cool thing about this is when you set up a train track, it's really easy to get it started because you're given always, every single time, starts in the upper left-hand box right there. There's, there's like never an exception to that. That is always the case. 
Okay, so by putting that in the upper left hand box, I now can look at my two conversion factors and figure out which one do I need. Now, what does that mean? Well, here's what we want to happen. I want gallons to go away and I want quarts to be the unit that I'm left with. Okay, so we need to find which one of those will let that happen. Well, that would be this one. Okay, why would it be that one? Well, because if I put gallon on the bottom, then gallons are gonna cancel out. If I have a fraction where I have one number over another number, if I had a two over two, they would cancel out. So having a unit over another unit is gonna let it cancel out. And if you're like, well, they're not directly over each other, it's all one big compound fraction here that's gonna be over each other eventually. As soon as I put that on the bottom because I need to cancel it, I have to put the other half of that equality up here, which is four quarts, okay? And so that's really all the setup I need. Now, this is a matter of doing the math. And here's the way the math works on a problem like this, is that you take everything in the numerator on the top, multiply it together, and then you divide it by everything in the denominator also multiplied together. Now in this case, I only have one thing on the bottom, so and it's a one, so it's not really gonna matter. But it, essentially, if we were gonna plug everything into the calculator, it would be five times 40 divided by one, okay? Um, so plug it into your calculator, five times 40, of course, is going to give us 20, right? So we're gonna have 20 as our answer. And what's really important here, this is the dimensional analysis part of this is cancel the units that cancel and whatever units are left over those are your new units okay so it's a simple straightforward conversion factor problem we're going to work one more real quick um, and then we'll practice some obviously as normal and then when we see moles in the next section you'll really start to get a feel for why this is so vital all right so for our next problem again a really simple one stepper we'll do two steppers when we get in the next video when we work some in class um, but we're gonna take a metric one. So we wanna convert 5.6 kilograms into grams. I'm gonna put the stipulation on it that you can't just move the decimal or use the staircase. And again, this is one of those problems that you could do in your head, but I want you to stop, pause, write it down, make sure that you can do it in the conversion factor way because learning it the easy way now will make your life a lot easier later on. So I'm gonna do my given and unknown thing again. So my given is 5.6 kilograms. And in this case, I didn't even really say what it was, so it's just 5.6 kilograms. My unknown is grams. And so I need to find my relationship between those two things. My relationship between grams and kilograms is that there are 1,000 grams in one kilogram. And you're like, how did you know that? Well, I've worked a few thousand of these. Um, how would you know that? Well, again, you'll have worked a lot of these by the end of the year, and you'll probably know them pretty well. But you could look it up if you really needed to. Um, and in fact, a lot of times on your formula sheets in the EOC at the end of the year, they'll have some of the simple conversions like this so that you can um, do this very conversion factor thing that we're talking about. Okay, so the relationship between kilograms and grams is one kilogram equals a thousand grams. Again, and I would not do this every problem, but since we're just starting this out, there are two conversion factors that we could get out of this. I only need one of them. So I'm going to set up my, my train tracks, my railroad tracks, or whatever we want to call them. I'm going to put my given in the first box, the upper left-hand box, always goes there. Okay, and then I want you to pause for just a second, look at this and say, which one of those two conversion factors do I need? Remember that your goal is to cancel out the kilograms and be left with grams, and so that would mean that I want to use this one because I want kilograms on the bottom. Essentially, the way this almost always works, okay, is that whatever you're given is, you want that this next box on the bottom, this next area on the bottom, you want it to be the same units. And so you're gonna pick an equality and a conversion factor that allows you to do that. Again, why would you do that? Why does that matter so much? Because that is gonna allow you to cancel your units, okay? And then the units that I'm left with are grams. Good, so I'm mostly there. Punch that into your calculator. You're gonna get 5,600 grams. Those of you who are really astute and really on the ball here are saying, what about sig figs? Two sig figs here, 
two sig figs in my answer. You might say, well, what about here? Each of these only has one sig fig, which would be true. Conversion factors, equalities, do not count at all as far as sig figs go. So when you're doing a given and unknown problem, your given pretty much always states how many sig figs should be in your final answer. So two and two is where we're going to go. Okay, that's the basics of conversion factors. It's more complicated. We could have five or six conversion factors all lined up in a row, and we will. Um, but we'll get to that um, in the next set of videos. Thanks, kiddos.